my name is Mike. In this video I'm going to try to combine this uh, Amazon cassette player with this old uh, Guitar Hero game controller and make a weird and fun uh, Malatron type instrument. I just attached the back of the player to the pick guard part with just uh, two short machine screws and nuts. I made sure to do it in a place where the heads are not going to be shorting anything out on the circuits or getting in the way. And the idea is that now this pick guard will mount back in originally with the original screws. Had to notch things away for it to make room for those nuts. Um, and now when the player gets mounted back in, we still have access to the two center screws, uh, which will hold that uh, player in place. Now I'm ready to make my connections to the tape player. I've already prepped this with a few different sets of wires. We have a red and black that will connect to the power connections. Um, then I prepped a, uh, a three conductor ribbon cable uh, with ID colors just for clarity. That will connect to the speed trimmer right in here. And then a two conductor ribbon cable with red and black identifiers for the audio output right here. And here are the connections for the speed control. I removed the original uh, trimmer, the little trimmer pot. It's, it was a uh, 500 ohm trimmer. And it was attached right here into these three points facing up like that. So that is the center of the pot and these are the two outer legs. So my yellow is soldered to what would be in the center then we have uh, the blue, which would have been this leg, and the red, this leg. So then if you follow that out, uh, the yellow is on the center, the red is on this one, and the blue will connect eventually to the switch or the key that triggers the tape. Um, so when you press it, the, the motor will sprint, spin when momentary. So, as you can see, and then that will adjust the speed there. Got the inside of the guitar neck here. We have five buttons and then six wires, one common and then one uh, 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 wire for each button. I'm going to cut five and leave the common going through and run those five back up to here with uh, the five pots that I will mount along here. So next I'm going to be drilling out those holes and mounting those pots. Alright, we've got the neck all completed. We have the ground that just passes through and then I cut all the other wires back here and folded them back over so each of the uh, five keys actually route to a pot to the left pin of the pot if you look in the bottom and then all of the centers of the pots all connect together and route back out here and then all of the right pins all connect together and then route back here. So basically all we're doing is just extending this same wiring connection five times out into the neck. Now I'm going to mount and install the uh, case mounted uh, speed control with switch. Instead of a push button, it'll have a toggle switch 
so a latching toggle this way you can set a like um, if you want to run at a slow constant speed when there's no buttons pressed or you can just use it as a st standalone player without the neck I just installed the pot and switch for the speed control um, I, I already had the yellow and red connected previously from the testing uh, now I'm just going to connect the blue to the center pole and then the bottom back to the switch I mean back to the pot there next up I'm going to be hooking the connection from the neck to the body uh, this is the original uh, game controller connection it just kind of fits into a little slot right here and all I'm going to be doing is connecting the red yellow and blue wires over here which will send that potentiometer signal up to the controls. Next, I'm going to be working on the delay module. You can find these boards on eBay and Amazon uh, marked as uh, I think Mike Reverb board, uh, also PT2399 is the actual IC on them, uh, but on eBay I think they're just labeled Mike Reverb board. Uh, these only have one control, it's a mix, um, but we are going to remove this pot so that I can panel mount it on the guitar. Also I'm going to remove R27, which is a surface mount resistor that is, sets the, the length, the delay length. After that, we will attach a, a 100K uh, uh, linear pot to the S and G uh, with a 1K resistor in line on e either S or J, doesn't matter. Then we will also be adding a feedback control with a, what is it, a 100K uh, audio pot uh, from, from the point between R21 and C15. There's a little point right here from this point to the center of mix. Um, if we just co connect a, uh, a 100k pot in line there, that will give us a feedback control for the circuit. So, Okay, I got the delay board all modified here. Had some issues, so unfortunately I wasn't able to film it all. Um, if you can see, the original pot was here. I removed it. When I removed it, this trace pulled up and pulled all the way back so I wasn't able to solder anything here so my I made this wire longer and I just visually traced it to the capacitor here and attached it there it's a little tricky doing that but uh, you have to do the same thing for the the feedback um, is the, the similar type of thing just one wire to this uh, what is it between C15 and R R21 um, the one that pulled off was going out to uh, C17. Uh, so I was able to do that. Hopefully that'll work. And then over here for the, the delay length, I had to remove R27. You just have to heat it up with soldering iron and push it off to the side, and it comes off pretty easily. And then I attached uh, two conductors, uh, one to the S and one to the G. And this will be for our delay length. And then... Uh, out on the pot, I will probably I will attach a 1K uh, resistor on either side, doesn't really matter, um, and then connect that for the delay length. Just got my three control pots installed. I also uh, drew some lines with a uh, Sharpie metallic silver pin, just connecting all the controls together. Uh, next, I will be installing the delay board. Uh, I'll figure out where I'm going to mount that next. Maybe some of these holes will work, I'm not sure. Um, so I'll mount that and then start wiring up the controls for that. And then I will need to add another uh, battery compartment for this, a nine volt battery, since everything else is running off the three volts. Delay. Starting with the mix pot, this is this one. This is the one that originally came on the board. So I'm just gonna wire it up in the same orientation that it came as 
after that is going to be our delay length. So an S in the G wires, that's going to go to the uh, B100K. I already pre-attached a 1K resistor to the leg closest, or the left leg if you're looking at the bottom. So this is going to connect to the center and to the resistor here. is our feedback control that is going to come down to this one I believe let's so we're going to come down to the center of this a 100 K and then we're going to need to make a little jumper from this right pin to the center of the mix there Okay, now our, that's our feedback control. Might need to clean that up a little bit after the fact. So that's all of our controls for our delay. Um, now we're going to wire in the input from the cassette player. That was this one that I previously ID'd with these uh, um, heat shrink. So that's going to come into the input here, the red on the positive black. That's why I previously ID'd these so I can easily figure this out right now. So next we'll connect up our output to the output here to the quarter inch. Um, I already have a wire prepped right here. Okay, that looks like that's all good there. What am I missing? Oh, and then finally our battery. That is just going to be a simple 9 volt clip. And I'm probably going to attach some Velcro in here that can just hold the battery in there. So. Okay, so I added a power switch up here to power toggle here. And I routed uh, the 9 volt on one side and then the 3 volt on the other. Just 9 volt for the delay and then 3 volt for the cas cassette player. I also uh, tidied up the wires with some zip ties and little cable tie uh, um, stick downs. I hot glued a piece of Velcro here for the 9 volt battery. And the 9 volt battery will connect there. Um, and then finally I'm going to be connecting the whammy bar which is just a big pot here. It's a 10K 35 degree pot. It only turns 35 degree. Um, so I'm gonna wire it back in place, but I also installed a selector toggle here. It's a double pull, um, double throw switch. So the idea is I'm gonna wire half of that switch so it routes the whammy bar control to feedback and then half so it routes it to the delay length. So on that side, it'll control feedback, and that side, it'll control the length. So, and pretty much after that, I think that'll be it. So go ahead and install that and wire that up to there and to those two pots. Okay, now that we have everything built, all we need is a sound source for the player. And for that, I recorded two different uh, samples from uh, my synthesizers. We have a Moog Workstat And the, on the other side, uh, three different Moog synthesizers. So those are the two sounds that I'll be using in this device. Okay, got everything assembled and tested and working. Um, the one thing that didn't work as expected was my selector switch. Originally I had the switch going side to side, thinking I could control both the feedback and the delay length. The feedback just really didn't work with the value of the um, the whammy bar here. So I just turned uh, the pot so now it's up and down, on and off for just the, the length is controlled to the whammy bar. <laughs> ¶¶